Okay, so let's get to grips with TSNE then. Um, and we can use TSNE to create an embedding. It's very easy to do that. Uh, you just have a this um, this calls a TSNE uh, object, which um, we fit to that data, and uh, that creates an embedding. And wh what I mean by an embedding is it takes this ten-dimensional data and projects it down into two dimensions. So every every point which had ten dimensions, which has ten ratings, every data point is now projected down onto a two-dimensional space. And we can look at them in two dimensions. Obviously, we can visualize two dimensions, and hopefully, that will give us sense of some sense of what the structure of the data is, um, which which bits of data are close to each other in in our ten dimensional space. By projecting it down onto two dimensions, that will hopefully uh, help us to understand it. Okay, so the line in bold actually does this this TSNE embedding returns a two dimensional list of x y values, which we can then show in a scatter plot. Uh, and in order to understand which, which um, you know, which of each, which of these dots are which in the scatter plot, we can label them, and that's just what this code does. So this labels uh, the code by putting the name of that product next to its dot in the two-dimensional space. So uh, we get this embedding from TSNE that gives us an x y position in the in the the um, scatter plot, and then I'm just putting a label. I've just put this plus five to to move the label slightly away from the center of the dot, but you might you might need to adjust that um, that offset value. Okay, and that's what it looks like. So it's just at the moment all it's done is just kind of spread them out over the uh, two dimensional plane. So actually, that's not particularly revealing. It doesn't it doesn't group low and high ratings together. So what we what we'd like to see is all the is all the clusters grouped together, and that would tell, tell us something about um, the structure of the data, but it's just spread them out over the two-dimensional plane. So one of the key parameters you can use in TSNE is um, what called per perplexity, and according to the, the person who wrote TSNE, the inventor Lawrence van der Merten, the uh, perplexity is like a knob that can set the number of affected nearest neighbors. Okay, so we're trying to get some sense of the clustering. So we want um, we want uh, our we want some of our um, our data points to have lots of close neighbors because that would tell us there's a cluster there. And he also said that loosely speaking, one could say a larger denser data set requires a larger perplexity. Okay, so typical values for the perplexity range between five and fifty. Uh, and there's there's a link there you can look it up. So in practice, um, it's a it's a good idea to experiment with different perplexities. I wouldn't just try one and, and take that as being the, the absolute answer. Okay, so in the next example, I've used um, nine different perplexities. Okay, the default that you get from scikit-learn is 50, and I, I found that was too high. That's just, that spread the data out far too much, as far as I'm concerned, because it, that's, uh, he's saying a, a range between five and 50 particularly, for a larger, denser data set, you want a larger perplexity. Uh, Scikit-learn sets it to the maximum of what he recommends of 50. Uh, we've got a very sparse, undense data set, small, undense data set, sparse data set. Um, so we want lower values. So I've, I've changed the perplexities and I've put a whole ban bunch of different values here in a list. You, so you can change this list, you know, put, put whatever numbers you want in there. And then what I do is, this code, um, so you can experiment with those values. This code loops through the different uh, values of P, the different perplexity values. Um, each time around the loop, we get a different perplexity value, and we create a scatter plot for that perplexity. And then I put those each in a subplot. Okay. So when I run that, this is what it looks like. And you can see, um, so the max, the minimum I've got at perplexity is four, and the maximum is thirty. And you can see by the time these ones down the bottom here are perplexity twenty, twenty-five, thirty, they're just spreading the data out across the um, across the two-dimensional plane. So they're they're not really telling us anything about the structure. These ones are a bit more useful. Okay, ten, twelve, fifteen, because you can see some sort of structure. There's some clustering there. Eight, even better. Uh, six and four, it's kind of gone too far the other way. So it's 
that's giving you lots and lots of really it's pushing all the clusters together if you like and then you can't really tell what's going on by the time you get to perplexity equals four you can't really tell what's going on so they're, they're a bit too tight 25 30 they're, they're they don't show much structure so somewhere in the middle there anything you know any of these particular values 6 8 10 12 15 there's four well-spaced clusters which kind of matches what we knew from k means okay so that that may be helpful in determining what our uh, data is showing us so the first thing to remember or first thing to find out about tsne is that the positioning of these dots mean mean absolutely nothing they don't that's not what tsne is about it's not about positioning them in the plane it's about in, uh, clustering them essentially and so if just because two dots are positioned you know to the right or the left or up and down doesn't mean anything but if they're close together then they may represent a cluster of data um, and especially if we try different perplexity values and the same set of data points are clustered for all all those different perplexity values that's telling us that uh, those things are are related to each other the data in some sense is related to each other which has been discovered both independently by uh, you know can be by the pep, by the tsne algorithm with different perplexities but also possibly by the um the k-means algorithm and the point about doing all of this is that clusters represent data points that are similar in some way okay so what in in our particular case what do those four clusters represent what are they, what are they telling us about the data right i'm going to uh stop that video there and then we'll we'll try and understand those tsne results that we've got out